Do you ever get confused doing cable kickbacks? You see it everywhere on social media. It's such a great exercise to target your glutes, but you see individuals doing it standing upright. You see individuals telling you to do it bending over. And then other individuals tell you never to do it bending over, while others tell you to elevate your planted foot. It's very confusing. So what the heck is the best way to perform cable kickbacks to ensure that you're effectively targeting your glutes? Prior to doing cable kickbacks, you are gonna want to invest into some ankle straps. I use these typically around my wrists, but you can put them around your ankles as well. Most gyms do have ankle straps, but the Velcro sometimes can be pretty worn out and I've had it happen before where you go to do a cable kickback and the Velcro completely lets go and the cable goes swinging back the other way. A little embarrassing, nothing to be overly concerned about. So if you wanna ensure top quality ankle straps, I highly recommend you invest into your own pair. Throw it into your gym bag. We're gonna make sure that we put our ankle straps around our ankles. I like to have them on both sides. Some people will like alternate back and forth, like take one off and put it on the other side. Doesn't seem like it's that efficient. Ankle straps, first and foremost. So like I previously mentioned, there are two popular variations that people are constantly telling you what to do, what not to do, and they are conflicting with each other. So let's go over both of them so you can have a bit of a visual here. Which leg are we gonna do? Do the left leg. A common one that I saw all the time, like maybe five years ago, was to ensure that your torso was parallel to the ground. So you typically wanna have a pretty good forward lean. Make sure that the lower pulley is all the way towards the bottom. So we're gonna take a step forward and we're gonna bend over where our torso, again, is parallel to the ground, making sure you can hold on. So I want you to watch the leg that is moving, more so paying attention to my glutes, because obviously that is the area that we are trying to focus on targeting. So we're gonna bend further forward like this, keep a slight bend in our knee, keeping our hips forward like that. And we're gonna kick back until our leg is in line with our back. We wanna ensure that our back is staying neutral. We're not kicking higher like that where our back is arching, making sure that it's nice and flat. Basically, you're creating a straight line. Hopefully I'm actually doing that in the demonstration. It does feel like it's in a straight line. I can feel it in my glutes and I don't feel it in my lower back. So that is a popular variation. For the last couple of years, a lot of people online have been telling you not to lean further forward and instead to stand more upright. So this is how that variation is gonna look. You're still gonna make sure you grab onto something. You're gonna take a bit of a step back, but not as far as you would because you're not leaning forward. You're gonna keep your torso upright like this, and we're gonna grab onto something, and we're gonna kick back like this. Again, making sure that we're not arching our lower back. It's a lot harder to arch your lower back in the standing variation like this. But as you can see here, the range of motion is significantly less. Both of those look pretty good, right? So which one should you do? A lot of people aren't gonna like this answer. It doesn't matter. You can do whichever variation you decide, whichever your heart desires. For me personally, I like both variations. If you pay attention again to my movement pattern, you can see here that I am achieving hip extension. And as we've learned in previous videos, make sure you guys go binge watch some of my videos if you don't know what I'm talking about here. The main movement pattern to target our glutes is hip extension. And as you can tell from both variations, I am accomplishing hip extension in both of these options. For me personally, based off of my body type, I can actually feel my glutes doing the work in both variations. Some individuals can't feel it as much when they are leaning further forward, and other individuals can't feel it as much when they are standing more upright. It's totally gonna depend on your biomechanics, your torso length, your femur length, 
A lot of individuals who have longer legs, they may find leaning further forward is a better option for them. In reverse, other individuals who have shorter femurs don't need to lean as further forward and can get away with standing more upright. So I encourage you guys to play with both variations. It really doesn't matter. I do think that at times we tend to overcomplicate things and what works for one individual isn't gonna always work for other individuals. And that's why practical experience and being okay with implementing and trying out different variations for yourself and deciding what is best for you instead of just blindly doing what your favorite influencer is suggesting online, that is gonna allow you to just be the captain of your own ship in your fitness journey. So I encourage you guys, play with both variations. I go back and forth with the two. I personally tend to lean a little bit further forward. My torso isn't 100% parallel to the ground when I do perform this variation, but bending ever so slightly forward, I just find I can increase my stability. I can get a better range and I'm able to effectively target the movement pattern where I find that I'm able to progress with the movement, get stronger week after week after week. And that's the name of the game here when we are trying to grow a given muscle group. I watched the video back and I'm very impressed to say that I was actually kicking my leg back in a pretty straight line, especially considering I haven't done cable kickbacks in a hot minute, but after today's demonstration, it may be time to start adding these back in to the program. One final thing that I did want to mention before I let you guys jet here is often a lot of people will find that the planted leg is the leg that they tend to feel more fatigue in comparison to the leg that's actually working, doing the actual kickback motion. This is very normal for a lot of people in the beginning. If you're just doing this movement, it's new to you, you haven't experienced it before, you definitely can expect the planted leg to experience some fatigue. So it's just something that you'll wanna work up to in the near future. As you continue to do the movement pattern more and more week after week, your leg starts to get stronger, you will find that that fatigue goes down and you'll start to be able to pay attention to that mind muscle connection, that contraction in the leg that's actually doing the kickback.